Hey, MMA fans, Cage Minds, Micah Frankel, here to do our predictions for UFC 150, taking place August 11th, Denver, Colorado. We got the main event, the rematch, lightweight title fight, Benson Henderson, Frankie Egger, too. We'll start off on the prelims, though, with the predicting. Nick Lentz, 23-5-2 with one no contest, taking on Iji Mitsuoka, 18-8-2. Lentz, relentless, pushes the pace, likes to put on pressure, and t wants to take the fight to the ground, being on top. Mitsuoka would like to keep the distance and use the striking. L Lance is so relentless. His cardio is greater. In Denver, that's going to come into play so much more. I believe that Lance gets the fight to the ground, wins a unanimous decision. Move up the prelims. Dustin Pegg, 11-7, taking on Chico Camus, who's 11-3, making his UFC debut. Pegg has the reach advantage, should keep the fight at distance and try to use his striking, but I don't believe he'll be able to. I think that Chico gets inside, hurts the body, probably getting to a clinch position then, drags the fight to the ground. He has the superior positioning and control, and I believe Chico will win a unanimous decision in his debut. Moving further up those prelims, we got Ken Stone 11-3 taking on Eric Perez 11-4. Perez, slightly impressive, that weird submission that Kim Winslow he did win, though, even though that John Prince Albert didn't believe it was submission. That we put behind us. Ken Stone coming off of a split decision with Dustin Pegg. This fight now coming ahead should be a war. I believe that, again, it will come to a split decision. It'll be Eric Perez using his striking, coming out victorious, as Stone will be applying some pressure, but will be dropping down, trying to do takedowns, not wanting to stand with Perez. I believe that Perez, though, will be the superior striker will hurt Stone more, will nullify the takedowns, and get a split decision victory in a really high-paced matchup. Moving up still on those prelims, we got Jared Hammond, 13-4, taking on Michael Kuyper, 11-1. Hammond, Kuyper, they're both going to push the, the Holland Dutch kickboxing style. I believe that Hammond has the better stand-up. He needs to keep this fight at distance. Uses striking, uses two inch reach advantage, keep that height advantage, fight tall because Kuiper does have the black belt in judo and the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt or purple belt, so he is a very well rounded grappler. But I believe at home in Denver, being uh, used to the altitude, that Hammond will outwork Kuiper and get the unanimous decision. Keep going on these prelims. We got Dennis Bermudez, 9-3, taking on Tammy, Tommy Hayden, who is 8-1. Hayden comes in, dropping down from lightweight in his last fight to his home at, at featherweight. He has a 6-inch reach advantage, a 3-inch height advantage. He's going to be the faster striker, lighter on his feet. The wrestling is what it's going to come down to. But being the more comprehensive grappler, I think that Hayden will win this fight with the submission, getting the submission through a transition as Bermudez does fall through submissions. Now we move on to the main card. Got Justin Lawrence, 4-0, versus Max Holloway, 5-1. This fight should be striking, should be fun, should be the fight of the night. Lawrence uses a bigger repertoire of striking elements, using more kicks, crazier angles, and he has the wrestling advantage. If Holloway can nullify the takedowns and keep the fight at reach, at distance, using his one inch reach advantage, he could win a striking battle. But I believe that Lawrence scores the takedowns and wins the fight off of this, but this fight, watch out, fight of the night and fireworks all over it. Keep moving up that main car. Yushin Thunder Okami, twenty seven and seven, taking on Buddy Roberts, who's twelve and two. Okami coming off with back to back losses. He will look to utilize that jab, utilize that striking that he was gaining getting more credible at as every fight goes along at. That would be the wrong thing for him to do. That's what he did against Tim Boach. What Okami needs to do is get in there, be the wrestler, the judo player, and get on top. What Buddy Roberts needs to do is hope Okami wants to strike. And then he can keep it at distance. Roberts, better footwork, better at angles, will keep the movement. And if this is a striking matchup, will win in a decision over Okami or possibly TKO him. But if Okami fights to his strengths, he will take a few shots, get inside, get the takedowns, use the top game, and win a decision. We're going with Okami, figuring that Chow Sutton will pound him into doing what 
they do up there with the Team Quest and use that wrestling. Talking about wrestling, we have two great, great grapplers in the next fight. It's Jake Shields, 27-6-1, versus Ed Short Fuse Herman, who's 20-7. and seven. Shields used an abundancy of striking, but he's not effective with his striking. Herman has heavy hands and is effective with his striking. But Shields, now back at 85, is a handful, is a world-class competitor. This comes down to the wrestling and the grappling. And just slightly, I believe that Shields is going to be able to get on top and win a unanimous decision. He'll probably find his way to get on top of the grappling transitions. Shields will get a successful return to middleweight. Move on to the co-main event. We've got Daniel Cowboy Cerrone, 18-4 with one no contest, taking on Melvin the youngest last in Gallard, who's 47-11-3 with one no contest. Cerrone uses his kickboxing. Good combinations, good use of kicks. Gallard, more of a boxer, really light on his feet, a lot of movement, fast hands. This is also another, should be a great fight, a fun fight. If this is a brawl like Melvin Gallard wants, he has the potential. Cerrone has a good chin, but there is a point where you could catch a guy. This could go either way in the striking. From what Cerrone probably will do is utilize the kicks. Stop that speed advantage that Gallard has, just his athleticism advantage, drag the fight to the ground somehow, lock up a submission. I think we have a second round submission. Donald Cerrone will again exploit Melvin Gallard's weakness. We move on to the main event, the rematch. Benson Henderson is now the champion this time though, with his 15-2 record, taking on Frankie the Answer, Edgar 14-2-1, who is in the challenger's role wanting to get back his belt. I believe that this is going to be nothing more than a repeat, and Ben Henderson will again be the more effective striker, the landing the more effective blows, causing damage to his opponent. Edgar will pick and poke and try to score points, but the overall winner of the fight, the winner who will obviously have caused more damage, the one who will be walking out smiling, still with the belt, will be Ben Henderson, in my opinion, unanimous decision. Edgar has a lot of heart and is very hard to finish, but I believe Ben will turn in another exactly dominant performance. Cage Minds, Micah Frankel, those were our predictions. Subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave us a comment, tell us about your picks, uncage the water within yourself. Check out Nux.com to keep connected with everyone in your fight community and keep up with the news. Sign up for the forum. Let your opinion also be known there about all sorts of topics. Cage Minds, thank you for watching.